Welcome back to IGN Live at E3 2018. I'm Max Scoville and I'm here with Lou Studdart from Activision. You are the producer on Spyro Reignited Trilogy. Yes, I am so excited to be here. Dude, Spyro's back. This is yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think I was sitting here on this on this very stage last year during a certain kind of Crash Bandicoot demo. Sure. I was speaking to you and I was like, what are the <laughs> chances of we're going to see Spyro get a remaster? And you guys were mum, but here we are yeah. talking about this. Please uh, tell me everything that's been going on with uh, the Reignited Trilogy. Sure. So Spyro Reignited Trilogy being developed by your friends at Toys for Bob. Great development studio, and they are just doing amazing work on the Reignited trilogy. Um, so it's all three games. It's over 100 levels. It's hard to believe there's almost over 400 characters in this thing. It's massive. And so the team is basically doing this remake that is just gorgeous from the ground up, you know, just making this so beautiful. And so uh, what we're showing off today at E3 is the first time fans and really everyone here is getting hands on because we just recently announced. Right, right. Now, obviously, I think a lot of people are, are, there's a certain fatigue on remakes, but this is a rebuild sure. from the ground up. This is yeah. the same architecture, but with a lot of added bells and whistles. That's correct. Uh, you've added a lot of character to the game, right? Yes. Yeah, so what's really great about the game, and honestly, what makes these remasters, along with Crash and Spyro, feel so fresh, is that it's hard to believe PlayStation 1 release of this, we're actually coming up on the 20th anniversary of the original Spyro the Dragon. And so if you go back and play it, Honestly, our nostalgia goggles are uh, uh, right, right. really kind of covering up a lot of how the game looks now. And so for us, it's been this wonderful opportunity to take this gameplay that frankly is timeless and kind of give it that visual sheen that our memory already kind of gives it. And so what's nice is that this game, honestly, those originals were pushing the PlayStation 1 so far because they were one of the first open world games really to frankly exist. Right, and so right. if you go back and look at it, the the visuals you know, that the team made back then you know, were at service to making these open worlds. And so now we're actually being able to go through and add that life, add that personality on top of what is already this phenomenal gameplay. Right, now, uh, obviously the visual fidelity uh, speaks for itself. Have yeah. there been any major tweaks to the sort of the, the gameplay? Like, how did, you, how did you approach making Spyro feel the same, but also yeah. modernizing? So there's actually a really great kind of way we've been thinking about that, is that we want gameplay to be key. But at the same time, we want to really take those things that were limitations and amp them up. And so here you'll see we've got a dragon that's being shown. In the original game, you had to rescue all these dragons, and the team that made it could only really put in four or five different models with different skins. And so what the team now has done is actually given all of those dragons distinct personalities that match their home worlds. So we just saw Nevin who lives in the artisan homeworld. This is the level Toasty. Okay. And since they're artisans, the team went back and thought, why don't we make all these dragons actually artisans? And so when you meet Nevin, you'll go through this paint gallery and then find out that he was a painter. And so in other levels, you'll find ones that are sculptors. And uh, my favorite, there's even one that's a barista. Oh, that's uh, awesome. But while we're doing that, we're also keeping the script the same and we're keeping the gameplay the same. And so it's really just taking that imagination and pushing it further while making sure that fans of the original get their hands on it, the muscle memory is still there, and the gameplay is still the same. That that's, being, yeah, sorry. yeah, that's, <laughs> that's very key. Yeah. Uh, now, obviously, there's an entire other generation of Spyro fans who were brought on board with uh, sure. Toys for Bob with uh, Spyro's Adventure, Skylanders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how are you approaching? Is there anything? Are there any like Skylanders Easter eggs in there yeah. for younger fans? Um, you know, honestly, we've actually taken the idea that. Spyro in this game is almost like a different character. We went and almost reverentially <laughs> went back to the beginning, went back to the original feel of him, completely, you know, kind of got free of any preconceived notions and went back to the, the framework. I and love so it. <laughs> we went back to the original model, the original attitude. Uh, we actually went back and re recorded a lot of the voices, but brought back some of the original cast. So we made sure that we got uh, basically the favorite voice of Spyro. Tom Kenny from Spyros 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. We brought him back to re-record for all three games. And so it's this unification, treating this Kamos, this, this trilogy as uh, a single distinct unit that we wanted to preserve and really remaster has been kind of the focus for Spyro. That's awesome. Now, obviously, yeah. the uh, the Spyro kind of community is is very vocal. There's a there's yeah. a, a lot of people who are who really this was like this is their childhood. This is their the thing that they're nostalgic for. Uh, what, what kind of feedback have you gotten from them that you've sort of taken into account with this? Sure. Yeah, no, the, I mean, the feedback from the fans has been tremendous. It's been extremely positive, but man, they are so fine-tuned to 20 years of detail that we have to take into account. So things from 
uh, just almost bugs that they may know about and like exploits that they may know about that we actually have to keep cognizant of. We have to remind ourselves that certain movement changes might actually have ramifications to, say, speedrunners is actually something that we're kind of looking at and judging as we go along just to make sure that not only are we delivering a phenomenal game, but we're also paying respect to what fans have in that muscle memory. So things from, yeah, just the way the character moves to the attitudes to, like I said, that gameplay that we want to keep as close to parody as humanly possible. Uh, so you'll actually see it in a lot of the enemies. They have these wonderful animations, but their behavior is exactly the same. Right. So and people so, can really, I mean, if they if they know this you know, by heart, it's not going to take them by surprise. And Yeah, we actually, it was funny, uh, the other night I was watching uh, videos of fan reactions, and people have already started to do side-by-sides, you know, videos playing at the same time, taking old VO and putting it into new scenes and doing things like that just to see how closely it matches. And it's been really great for the team just to see how fans and how people who have that 20 years of experience in history are falling in love with it all over again. And that's amazing. We are looking at this playing on a PS4 Pro, yep. and uh, can you talk a little bit about the sort of the, just the, the visual fidelity and the, and the graphical enhancements? The lighting here is really, really key. Sure. Yeah, I mean, the team has done just this absurd amount of work to make this game just sing on both the PlayStation and the Xbox. And so come September 21st, I mean, you can see it here. The team's actually still doing the work on it, um, but a lot of the things that they've been focusing on are things that really add to that personality that couldn't be there originally. So you'll see it in the animations for the characters, especially Spyro. Uh, he actually has 100 times the geometry that he did on the original PlayStation 1. And it's all there. You see it in his face. You see it in the attitudes. You see it when he's talking to the other dragons. But then they went through and did things like uh, adding reactive grass. If you go back to the original game, you think the, the game's full of these lush hills of you know, green. They're flat plains of just green texture. And so they went in, added reactive grass. You can see it move as Spyro walks through it. You can actually roll through the grass, which I think is hilarious. You can singe it with That's... your flame breath, so you'll actually see it <laughs> react. And so it's just those things that they did to take what we originally had and just figure out a way to make it feel alive. That's we fantastic. I mean, there was that there was that terminology for a minute of like, oh, Pixar quality graphics. But if you yes. look at, I feel like if you look at this side by side with what Pixar was doing in the '90s, it's like, no, this is this is this is incredible. This looks like a, a playable cartoon. Yeah, it's uh, phenomenal. Now, as for the uh, the voice cast and the voice uh, voice recordings, uh, sure. there there are new dragons, you said, or, or so what we've done. They've is got we've, new characters. So what we've done is we've actually re-recorded the entire uh, script bringing in as many of the people from the original game as we could, as well as keeping the script 100% the same. And so what we've done is we've taken uh, these kind of characters, so the dragons, for instance, them being artisans in the artisan homeworld, and figuring out ways for the actors to take that as inspiration for how they speak and how they uh, gesticulate and how they have bigger personalities while still remaining true to the original script. Right. And so it's things that help our animators, things that you saw with, say, Nevin in the, the Toasty homeworld. Now he has a painter's palette, a really awesome beret, and he can gesticulate more and give so much personality, even in these short snippets where you're talking to these dragons. Are there any, uh, any familiar voice actors showing up in the cast in addition to Tom Kenny? So we're talking about Tom Kenny today, but we'll have more to reveal in the future. Uh, tell us a little bit about the music. We can't really uh, hear it over here over the Jim sure. 3 but... Yeah, no, the music's awesome. So what we've done is we've actually taken Stuart Copeland's original score for all three games and have been working on remastering them. And the, the big thing that we're doing with remastering is making it really dynamic to gameplay. So in the original games, you know, just kind of play. But now what we've done is we've done it so that it has uh, dynamic reactions to what's going on in the game itself. So when you're inside, they can pull out some of the uh, instrumentation so it feels quieter versus if you get to a boss fight, layering in some of the percussion, layering in some of the additional sound to really make it more lively. And so it's still the same songs that you remember, but now they're reacting to your gameplay like never before. Uh, my favorite is actually when you run as Spyro. We add in some subtle drum beats to as actual gallop. And so you'll hear it when you're playing, it adding this drum beat to the music to really sync up the gameplay with the musical presentation in the game. Nice. Uh, now, with the uh, obviously, I, I hate to keep comparing this to, to Crash. That's but, fine. You know, it bears comparison. Uh, they added uh, was it Crash's sister was was playable. Sure. Uh, is would it be fair for for fans to expect uh, maybe an additional additional playable character or maybe some some kind of surprise in that in that vein with uh, Spyro? So we're only talking about the levels that were showing off this uh, E3 right now, but 
We'll see how it goes. You've got, yeah, like 100 levels to yeah. show off. We've only something. got 100 plus levels to get through and, you know, a lot to show in the next, uh, what is it, just a few months before September when we come out. Now, uh, a little bit of insight. I, I, I remember when, you know, when Toys for Bob was first working on, on the, the Skylanders games, yeah. uh, everyone was like, oh, look, the Spyro's back. That's cool. Uh, sure. What was the, at what point did, did, kind of internally, did people start rumbling about remastering Spyro? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's been something that they've really loved with the character, right? I mean, Spyro has been a foundation for the team for so many years now that it's always been kind of in the back of the mind. And I think, you know, our own initiative, our own seeing of how Crash is doing, our own love for the character, and just wanting to see what we can do with these original games. So what we've done is really just kind of put all of our heart and studio effort into making this game. And so it's been... Not, not, you know, obviously very recently, but at the same time, these past couple of years, uh, just kind of a refocus on these original characters and bringing these original um, voices back to the fray. Just felt like the right time. Cool. And uh, they just announced that uh, Crash would be coming to Switch uh, just in a few weeks, actually. Yep. Uh, would, it be, would it be fair to maybe expect that at some point we might see Spyro pop up on there, too? We're only talking about PS4 and Xbox One uh, okay. for the All launch. Right. In yeah, September. you guys, you guys keep mum about some stuff like that. <laughs> uh, final question: uh, Obviously, their entire generation grew up with Spyro. Yeah. Some of them have kids now. Uh, yeah. Have there been any uh, modifications to the difficulty for maybe younger players to get into it? Yeah. So one of the things that really worked well in uh, Crash Bandicoot and Sand Trilogy that we've carried over to the Spyro Reignited Trilogy are those what we call quality of life improvements. So things that you don't think of that had to exist back then that don't now. So auto saving. Awesome. It's one of those things. So checkpoints, cool. things like that. So it's no longer having to be opt-in. And then, weirdly right. enough, the biggest thing, right analog stick control for camera instead of bumpers. Perfect. Thank you so much for showing this yeah. off. Uh, it looks great. We've got lots yeah. more coming up, so don't go anywhere right here on IGN.